Yeah. Now it's time to move to our main session, which are the lectures from both speakers. This session will be guided by the moderator to Dr. Fitria. Time is yours. Uh, terima kasih. Thank you, Dr. Isti, uh, for the uh, opening the uh, today's e seminar. So, uh, good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, before the presentation begin, uh, allow me to introduce the speaker for this seminar. So, uh, our first speaker is Professor Dr. Nur Azia Muhammad Zin from Program of Biomedical Sciences, Center for Diagnostic, Therapeutic, and Investigative Studies, Faculty of Health Sciences, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. And uh, I received such an outstanding uh, curriculum vitae for Professor Nur Azia and tried to recap it in a short way. I hope I didn't do it uh, in the wrong way. Uh, Prof. Nur Azia completed Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology from University Putra Malaysia in 1993 and doctoral degree in Bacteriology from University of Strasbourg in 2001. Uh, during her professional career, Prof. Nur Azia received many international and national recognition. Uh, I, I just have to, I only can recap it and try to pick in the best uh, recognition that she uh, received, such as leader of project collaboration with Seoul University in 2014, also a certified trainer for zoonotic diseases under the fund of USA, and Southeast Asia One Health University Network, and also project leader in Malaysia One Health University Network in 2016 in first group of National Antimicrobial Resistance Committee. And of course, Prof. Nora has around 110 publications in journals, proceedings, and books. Uh, Prof. Nora's current research interests are in anti-infection from microbial metabolites antimicrobial resistance and infectious disease. Uh, to shorten the times, I will uh, give the uh, presentation time for Prof. Nora Zia to deliver the first speech uh, entitled Antimicrobial Resistance, One Health Approach, Current Scenario and Research on Finding Antimicrobial Agents. To Prof. Nora, uh, your time to presentation is around 60 minutes. Prof, the time is yours now. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fitria, for extensive uh, <laughs> background. I'm sure that um, uh, all of us have um, capable of doing this. Yeah, this is all inshallah uh, all for, for for good for 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 our nation uh, to share the knowledge yeah? i'm not saying that i'm the expert in this field but uh, i always want to share uh, my knowledge my experience and and my, my research uh, on this particular topic i am surely the the audience the students uh, from medical background is much more um, expert than me in this particular field maybe and uh, i think dr anis and Dr. Siptelia also have your own uh, capability, right? So, so to today, this this morning, I just want to share my my experience, yeah, my my knowledge on on this uh, antimicrobial resistance, and um, uh, if I can um, put up my uh, presentation, everybody can see my slide now. Everybody can see my slide. Yeah, All right. Okay. Right. So as, as the title is the um, antimicrobial resistance, um, I, I'm, I'm going to, to divide that my, my talk uh, for three three particular uh, three particular um, area or, or the, the three uh, big uh, team is uh, the first of all I will um, 
discuss about how the One Health University network network approach can can be uh, used in uh, to to combat this uh, uh, problem, and of course I'm going to discuss a little bit about the current scenario in Malaysia as well as in in in, in Indonesia maybe or in the other country, and of course after that the the third part is the the research how we run how we um, carry out the research on this particular. Um, Feel to find the uh, antimicrobial agents to combat this uh, resistance, right? So uh, everybody can see my second slide. Uh, not, not, yet. Yet. not yet, not yet, not yet, Rob. not yet. The, uh, the we, have, uh, we, we cannot see. Yet. Not yet. So yeah. uh, how about uh, now? No, not yet. Well, maybe oh, you have yet. to stop share first and start uh, again. Uh, okay. Uh, you cannot see my slide, the second slide, not yet. Not, not, yet. not yet. The uh, first slide also not yet. <laughs> all not right, yet. so I should... Uh, uh, stop share first. Okay. Uh, just hold on. You cannot see the the, the slide yet. No, not yet. Yeah. Uh, so I should uh, here yeah, just now is here. Okay. Sure. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So now you can see the second yes. slide. Yes. 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 It's yes. yes. All right. Okay. So can you see the third slide? Yes. 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 All we right. Can. Yes. All right. So thank you very much. Okay. So um, the as as you can see from the slide, we have um, several um, scenario on the antimicrobial resistance, which is a is a natural occurring phenomena due to the bacterial adaptation itself. We will go to the to the uh, what you call it to the fundamental basic concept of this antimicrobial resistance first. So this uh, phenomenon is uh, due to the, let's say for the overuse uh, of the drugs itself or the misuse, it's not appropriate uh, prescriptions of the drug. And of course the frequent antibiotic usage over the long period times, this is will put the uh, selective pressure that allowing the antibiotic resistant bacteria to survive and multiply. And uh, if this um, this process or this phenomena is, is not being checked or, or is, is ignored by, by uh, GP or, or by the health uh, people, the infection disease will be, un uh, will be untreatable, leads to the more severe uh, illness and increase in the mortality. So uh, this has been um, tabled by the WHO it is one of the primary public treat in the 21st century and uh, at the moment the, the annual death due to AMR is put reached 10 million by the year of the 2050 this is predicted by the WHO all right so my uh, third slide now everybody can see yes prof all right good so uh, for, for the one half uh, prospective um, point of view, this is the, the approach that been uh, proposed, I think, in the late uh, early uh, 20, uh, 21st century. This uh, will acknowledge the health of human, animal and environmental is closely linked together. And I'm sure Dr. Anis will um, talk uh, more about this later uh, in the Indonesia approach or Indonesia experience. But, but now for, 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 uh, for me, I would like to introduce how um, we in the uh, CIF uh, Southeast Asia One Health University Network uh, and of course this uh, Siahun, the, the short form, is including um, 61 universities in the seven countries in, including Malaysia and Indonesia they have uh, Indohun, Vietnam we they have uh, Wuhun and, and so forth. So this um, uh, Siahun is a big uh, university network that contain all the 81 university for the seven countries in the uh, Southeast Asia. So uh, the critical elements, as you know, 
in transforming the current and future workforce uh, is, is in, especially in the AMR is to ensure that uh, we have the the prepared uh, well uh, organized uh, to to challenge the emerging public health yeah and and of course this is uh, the AMR is global issue because it's involved from human to the livestock and including the the, the environment is uh, how the inter interlink interlinking between the 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 animal food as well as the how a uh, human uh, um, um, uh, produce the waste and leave it to the environment, contaminated environment, together not only the the the, the poisonous waste, but as well as the antibiotic residue to the river, to the to the environment. So so this is uh, the approach that been um, that been um, proposed, that been uh, uh, used uh, as a as a uh, guideline. Uh, for the the uh, as well as for the my own and on and, and others uh, uh you know see network in, in the whole uh, uh southeast asia so um as, as uh, we know that the emergence of uh, antimicrobial is starting in the bacteria the bacteria contain the genes that can uh, be used for, 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 for their own uh, purpose maybe but uh, they, they carry the particular genes that can be uh, can resistant to, to many many uh, antibiotics so how how is the the, the the types of resistance observed in in bacteria then yeah? by by uh, definition we have uh, is either in strict resistance or resistance so so for the intrinsic resistance is uh, might be from from the natural trait itself and it's between the species or genus of the bacteria so so how how the the they, they require the uh, they acquire the resistance <clears throat> so um, the strain may uh, develop the resistance which was uh, previously they are very susceptible eh? let's say for the staphylococcus aureus they have the mssa eh? the methicillin uh, uh, susceptible staphylococcus aureus, but now they become uh, develop the resistance has become MRSA, the methicillin resistant uh, staphylococcus aureus. So, so it's it's a acquired uh, uh, resistance only present in only certain strain of the species or genus. So, as as you know, for the students, uh, you have uh, learned from the undergraduate level, maybe, yeah, the, we have a uh, various mechanism of resistance, yeah, it's from the structural or function of the bacteria itself that allowed to tolerate uh, uh, in, uh, to be insensitive, yeah, but they can acquire the resistance through the uh, vertical, uh, vertical transmission, they say the gene mutation, and, and some, some of them will get the induced gene mutation by horizontal um, transformation, transduction yeah, from, from species to species uh, and the transduction can conjugation from mobile element, yeah, let's say for the, from the one plasmid of the bacteria to another plasmid of the bacteria, it, it can be, can be happen. Right, uh, here uh, is, is from the USH um, slide that I obtain, uh, they categorize as between the antibiotic targets and the antibiotic resistance. Yeah? Uh, some antibiotic like uh, beta lactams, antibiotics, vancomycin, they targeted the cell wall of the bacteria. And some uh, rifamycin, for instance, uh, the antibiotic they use for the, maybe for the mycobacterium tuberculosis infection, the target is the RNA or DNA synthesis yeah? and, and so forth. So, so, so different antibody have their own target. But um, how how the resistance uh, taking place? Yeah, from the uh, aminoglycoside, for instance. Yeah, they have uh, efflux mechanism. Yeah, that can uh, uh, made them resistant to the various antibiotics like tetracycline, beta lactans, microlide and so forth. And of course, the, the, by the mechanism of the immunity and the bypass, the target modification, inactivating enzyme. So they, they have uh, cleverly, uh, the bacteria have find a way to make them resistant for each and every um, antibiotics. 
So uh, because of the approach in involve of the animals as well as of the uh, environment, so we have to have the relevance, yeah, how the animal production play a role in the emergence of antimicrobial resistance. What does evidence so far that we have? Yeah, um, as we know, we have a lot of from the papers, uh, current uh, publication has been reported. They have a lot of uh, the emergence of uh, bacteria in the livestock population. Yeah, in the livestock population is connected to the uh, AMR emergence. Yeah? And of, after that, it's will colonized and infected to the humans. Yeah? Um, uh, some some uh, some studies show that the most emergent of antimicrobial resistant in bacteria uh, is appear originated from the antimicrobial usage or short form AMU in human. So 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 the majority of AMR bacteria in in the livestock seem to originate from the AMU in the livestock, meaning to say that uh, the farmers the what I call it the chicken breeder use a lot of lots of antibiotics for the growth hormone actually to to make it the chicken um, growth instead of maybe three months but with the the supplement of antibiotics in the food they can grow the chicken just only maybe one month or, or shorter for the profit purposes and and they use a lot and a lot of the antibiotics yeah so so the the usage of the um, originated from the livestock is, is become um uh, what you call it the emergence of the this uh antibiotic resistant to the human yeah right so so uh, this uh, from from the um point of view the um in most cases yeah both animal and human is a positive association uh, was found between the volume of uh, antibiotic antimicrobial usage consumption and the prevalence of the resistance yeah, to the exposed bacteria population <clears throat> so um, of course the the consensus uh, whether there are roots for spillover of AMR between the bacteria population and human, between the human and food producing uh, animal, they, they are there are the yeah, in in both uh, both direction from human maybe to the uh, to the to the livestock and from the livestock to the to the human. <clears throat> Uh, there are also an issue on the potential role of the global travel and trade in the transboundary dissemination of the resistance. So it's a lot of uh, contributing factor in, in this um, area as well. <clears throat> so um, this is an example of the sources for the AMR from the bacteria and the bacteria genes in animal production settings. Yeah? Sorry, because we, we know that we are, I know that most, uh, some of the audience are medical doctor here, but we have to clear uh, the concept is how actually the transmission of these resistant genes can be, um, can be uh, what you call it, the transfer from the animals to the to the human let's say for example uh, the campylobacter uh, species uh, one of the pathogenic bacteria is a lot uh, of them uh, resistance uh, to towards the fluoroquinolones yeah fluoroquinolones and then uh, is commonly uh, observed in the gastrointestinal infection so we we know we know uh, we now uh, know that this um, uh, Poultry is one of the sources for this campylobacter that might be have um, uh, carry the genes that are resistant to the fluoroquinolones. Yeah, so there, there are research uh, reported there are other sources of the human uh, infection coming from the raw, unpasteurized milk and and contaminated water. So for the enterococcus, for the E. coli, for the LA, MRSA, yeah, the large animal uh, medicinal resistance of focus aureus, yeah, and then the salmonella species that the nine typhoidal, the gastroenteritis, yeah, gastrointestinal, that uh, resistant to uh, to the cephalosporin, uh, quinolone, tetracycline, and so forth. So it's coming from the uh, many animals like pigs, cow, and the poultry. 
So it's, it's here uh, is uh, the, the diagram showing that how the antimicrobial usage in humans, animals, agriculture will result to the dispersion for the antimicrobial residue, uh, residue to get aquatic and terrestrial environment. I'm sure that uh, Dr. Anis after this will elaborate more on, on this, how the eco health things uh, are closely related to, 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 to give, um, to uh, play important role in this uh, resistance uh, uh, contamination. Right, uh, again, uh, I, I'm not need to, to go uh, to the detail for this because uh, this is between the agriculture as well as the to the human and as well as to the to the um, animals, um, wildlife, uh, environment and involve the agriculture, how these um, antibiotics uh, resistance, antimicrobial resistance uh, play important from the livestock from the to the contaminated meat yeah, to the human yeah, and then so forth from the soil and then and so forth right so the spread of the uh, amr between the animals what, what we uh, know show uh, so far as i mentioned earlier uh, the both uh, pathogenic and non-pathogenic resistant bacteria can be uh, transmitted from the livestock to the human we are different um, routes yeah, from the food consumption, uh, direct contact with animal, direct contact with waste, yeah, and then for me, yeah. So any mechanism that helps spread the bacteria has the potential to transfer the bacterial resistance because uh, the contaminated bacteria is is already carry the the antimicrobial resistant genes, yeah. They, 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 they are with them in the plasmid or, or in the in the DNA. It's just that the genes. Uh, the 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 the, the evolve, involvement of the uh, resistance is already with the with the bacteria. So the consumption, the um, contact, is all can spread the the transmission. Right. Uh, some of the um, uh, what you call it the uh, booklet available in. Uh, in the um, mitigating this um, this problem, we have the FAO uh, Food Agriculture in the United Nations 2016 to 2020. Yeah, we have the Global Action uh, Plan yeah, the by WHO, and, and in Malaysia we have this um, Malaysian and uh, Action Plan for the antibacterial resistant from the 2017 to 2021, and this is uh, from the Minister of Health. I'm sure that Indonesia also have your own uh, guideline, your own action plan based on the WHO and uh, FAO guideline. So, so uh, these are the, all the uh, all the ministry yeah, in in our country uh, looking for these problems. Um, take this this problem very seriously and and with the pandemic of the covid-19 everything the imaging of the new diseases imaging emerging of this uh, resistance many resistant isolate and so forth right so this uh, the um, involvement yeah involvement surely involvement for this um, to 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 combat this uh, problem, of course, is involved of this, uh, the government itself, yeah, the the awareness coming maybe from the educator, from the um, uh, uh, lecturer, public health people, yeah? so they have a surveillance uh, and monitoring uh, program. I'm sure that how we, we can hear after this from Dr. Anis maybe yeah, how this um, this can be uh this how the work done by indonesia counterpart to combat this involvement all the different different aspect different people different group like for the sea we have the academician we have the researcher we have the ministry people and we have the veterinary department uh come close together and um developing the curriculum developing the new module for the for the students developing the the new approach and uh, developing the policy in, in uh, uh, for, for, to, to to suggest to the for the ministry level yeah, how we can uh, 
uh, together, uh, uh, what you call it, um, cooperate together. So this is how the beauty of the uh, the one half uh, network university network not only involve the uh, the academician, not only involve the um, veterinarian people, but also all the the wildlife. Even we have some uh, collaboration with the wildlife people department yeah, wildlife department looking at this aspect for the we have the huge rabies outbreak last time so veterinarian before this just only what uh, people working maybe in the in silo individual basis but Veter veterinary just only look at the animal aspect uh, medical doctor only looking at the uh, human aspect and and and, and then scientists only doing the research and research and research and just keep in the cupboard for example so so now it's uh, it's opening eye for for me as well. Yeah? Uh, before this, maybe for the uh, last ten years, fifteen years, I'm working only how to. Um, I'm going to share my my research. Just only getting a publication, getting uh, students, uh, graduate, the postgraduate student, uh, research PhD student, and after that publication and thesis and stop. So how, how we contribute back to the community, how we uh, get this done at the community level, how, how we should educate people in this uh, particular things, how we should go to the, you know, the community based research, something like that. So, so can be directly being used by the people. So, you know, as a, as a scientist, we only look at the one aspect for me, especially I'm, I'm talking about myself, actually, it's very narrow, you know, but when we uh, come together with people from different area different uh, approach um, veterinarian um, wildlife people um, uh, policy maker people you can broaden yeah the 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 the, the, the thinking the way of uh, mindset is oh you should do this you should do this not only papers and papers you know not only uh, graduate student and graduate student but also the the um, uh, the, the the impact to the community yeah, to be used directly to educate even the school children yeah, talking about the antibiotic to the two school children yes we can do that actually because one of the um, um, uh, aspect that we um, I was in in Yale University in 2015 we developed the curriculum to find the uh, we call it a small uh, small uh, small world small world now it's a change a tiny world it's talking about the finding the microbes from the different sources from soil from plant and uh, produce the the antibiotic uh, properties yeah so we we bring the small children go find at the backyard the, the sample and get the the colony of the bacteria and how they can kill for other bacteria you know something that's give them some some exploration so oh this is how they produce the antibody the how the the people uh, getting uh, infected yeah how the people can be uh, can be cured by the antibody and so forth so, so this is how the uh, the um, the important um, roles that can can be played by by us by academician surely yeah all right so uh, we uh, this is one of the photo that uh, we have in Chiang Mai 2015 under the Siuhun training uh, so we have uh, particularly uh, concentrated on the AMR so we developed the module uh, the module uh, for to be to be um, share with the participants we, we have the, the the TOT first one one week the training for trainer uh, together with the USA people's expert uh, professor uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Bender and and uh, Stephen uh, here, uh, Catherine also here. So the, 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 they have the training first, and after that we have the um, um, uh, people all over the Southeast Asia University, the academic staff, the postgraduate student join us for another two weeks of workshop. So we have the like model, we have like play play uh, games, games play, uh, role play, uh, how this uh, antimicrobial, we have the like uh, press conference, how this uh, AMR can um, uh, can be a huge, uh, what you call it, um, uh, emerging diseases. Yeah? So, so that kind of, not only learning for the 
how the mechanisms, how the antimicrobial resistance taking place, but also how we can combat with the combination, with the collaboration with all the people in the different sector. And another one we have in Natrang in Vietnam, the same year, in the one if earlier, just now, and earlier in, in the earlier in the year, and the second one is in December, I think. So uh, also the under the Sio Hun and then under the uh, fund by the USA, so how we, we can um, uh, similar courses but from from a different group of people. Yeah? So it's about one week uh, training as well for them. All right, so um, now we go to the second part of the, um, for the um, lecture about the research on, on um, a NMR. Yeah? AMR, uh, that link between human and animal agriculture. How, how the people in, in the whole world um, looking at this um, area for, 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 for concentrating on the AMR. Can, can I know how many minutes to go? I have, uh, Dr. Petria. Yes, bro. Uh, how have, many minutes I have? You have. We will stop until around 10, 10.45. All right, okay. So we will, yeah. All right, good, good. So this is my second part of my um, lecture, sharing session uh, on, on the M AMR, that link between human, animals, and the culture. Right. So the, the first of all that uh, people are worrying about this, uh, the presence of the MCR1 resistant genes. Yeah? MCR1 resistant genes that lead to the ban uh, agriculture use of the polystene. So with this um, particular genes presence, make the bacteria resistant to the polystene, the last result of the uh, antibiotics. Uh, this is uh, the widely used animal production actually in, in the whole in the in the whole world, Europe. Rest. So uh, so this is uh, resistant. It's likely spread the uh, worldwide. Right? So it's starting uh, spread in China to Africa and in the food supply. Yeah? So uh, they have uh, uh, at least three studies uh, reported in the Lancet Journal uh, in the between uh, twenty. 21, uh, 2012 and to the 2013, they, uh, um, what I call it, uh, get the about 2,000 uh, people, Dutch people, that uh, traveling from the November 2020, 2012 to 2013, and they found that it's uh, six isolates that have uh, these particular genes in E. coli. So, so this is the dangerous of the MCR genes. It's all, not only present in one bacteria, but it's a uh, moving, it's a mobile, it's a in the plasmid, in the mobile element that we can transfer from one bacteria to the other bacteria. They have in E. coli, they have in salmonella, uh, that is all carry the uh, cholestine resistant isolate. Yeah. Uh, so in this agriculture, they, they, they found that because it's coming from the uh, used widely in the agriculture, so it should be banned to be used, yeah? to be used of the quality in the agriculture anymore because of the uh, transmission of the resistant genes. Yeah? Uh, here is the, um, has been uh, report, uh, 2020, yeah? the, the, it's a, a current publication on the biosafety and health. Uh, is is uh, is it said that the this uh, cholestine resistant genes yeah is very very prevalent yeah in the uh, in the bacteria that are common to the animal and human the the name itself is a mobilized yeah? mobilized meaning to say it is a mobile it can be transferable from from the uh, one species of the bacteria and to to the others yeah? that's why they they have we have to have uh, uh, find a very um, tremendous effort to stop this. Yeah? Uh, this is becoming the multi drug resistance yeah, uh, that's been used widely in the in the agriculture and then as well as the um, use in the uh, for the um, uh, veterinary medicine. Yeah, and they have 
of course the emergence of plasmid mediated as i said uh, the based on the um, plasmid mediated cholesterol resistance in the in china uh, they have a molecular study as well as the fundamental uh, uh, what you call it, the microbiological study on this yeah they use um, different uh, method yeah polymerase chains uh, po uh, sorry uh, different uh, um, uh, sequencing method yeah the pcr and sequencing method uh, for the plasmid and then of course um, the compare yeah the sequence homology modeling has been established as well as uh, this is confirmed to confer that this um is a polymixin resistant yeah, that uh, been uh, confirmed in the in vivo study using the uh, murin type uh, model for in Egypt as well, yeah, they have this um, antimicrobial resistance in the Enterobacteriaceae yeah, from from the healthy broilers. Uh, so it's um, in the from the uh, extended spectrum beta lactamase producing E. coli. Uh, we have some. Uh, this is uh, I think this is uh, journal twenty fourteen. It's in. India, yeah, in India, uh, about they have uh, not not only for the MCR genes, but they have some um, E. coli resistant that been isolated from the food. Yeah, 2014, the reported from India that uh, they um, select 150 samples, yeah, from vegetables to the raw egg surface raw chicken different different various uh, samples and they found that uh, they concentrate only to to the isolation of the e coli and they uh, did the susceptibility pattern uh, and found that they have the um at least four percent extended spectrum for beta lactamase yeah, esbl uh, producer been detected yeah, from uh, vegetable sellers and raw chicken yeah, raw uh, raw um, egg surface and raw meats yeah. so so it is um, um very important yeah, to avoid the uh, is, uh, to avoid this uh, transmission by um, using the good hygiene practice yeah. some same same in, in malaysia i'm not sure how the how indonesia get this uh, uh, food poisoning uh, bacteria yeah. we have last last year or two last two years we have the uh, contaminated from malay noodles yeah, salmonella food poisoning and and some of them carry the resistant genes yeah. we have uh, the, the 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 bought the the noodles the Malay noodles, we call it laksa. I'm not sure how, how in Indonesia we call it laksa. We have laksa here. But it's, 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 uh, they have the egg, boiled egg, as well as the fish, fish uh, uh, sauce, fish um, gravy, um, kuah. Yeah? So they, they, they brought the, 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 the noodles uh, coming from the northern part to the uh, western part. It's about uh, three, 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers in the room temperature carry in the in the car so by the time uh, reach uh, Kuala Lumpur is already contaminated and uh, they have a huge gathering family gathering and it's got contaminated yeah, by salmonella so and, and some of them carry the, 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 the resistance genes as well so this is how it's um it's happened eh? uh, nowadays people's lot of um great food eh? but they have their like um Last year they have the they ordered the the pudding uh, egg pudding by the grab food. You know the grab food may be exposed to the high uh, normal temperature for quite a long time, and they, they contaminated because from the egg. You know, they they, they prepare the pudding using the uncooked egg, the raw egg. Hmm? It's very nice, maybe I am not sure. I never tasted, but uh, the pudding is made from the uh, raw egg, huge of the white yolk egg and then people just can get contaminated with that yeah? Hopefully, but by that time it's no no resistant genes been found it's lucky enough yeah? so this is how these um is this uh, people um, or, or we can get the infected food poisoning bacteria 
Right. So uh, another thing in Malaysia even, yeah, we have uh, this is uh, 2020, very current uh, in the UMK, the University of Malaysia Kelantan Research. They found that the MCR genes that encoded polystyrene resistant E. coli in the chicken meat. No, raw chicken meat as well as the bean sprout. Hopefully by the time that chicken has been cooked, it's no more <laughs> no more E. coli resistant polystyrene genes over there. Yeah? So this kind of very um, easy yeah, to get contaminated with this um, bacteria that carry this particular resistant genes. Yeah? This uh, prevalence the study was conducted to detect the presence of polystyrene resistant E. coli uh, in the raw chicken and bean sprout. It's very, I know it's uh, contaminated in German. Uh, 2016 or 2015, five years back, also coming from the, uh, it's a contaminated E. coli 0157, the hemorrhagic E. coli. It's coming from the uh, bean sprout as well, from the German vegetable. It's, it's now, it's, it can happen. Before that, only people know that um, hemorrhagic E. coli yeah, 0157, E. coli 0157 just contaminated from the, um, um, what you call it, the meat. Not chicken, but the cow meats, eh, the cow meats, the burger. Uh, but now they are from the, the vegetables. Yeah? Maybe the, the vegetables contaminated with the animal feces. But but knowing that uh, people in the Europe uh, using the, how they produce the, 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 the bean sprout, it's, it's not using the animal feces as the uh, fertilizer. But I, I'm not sure how, how it's being contaminated. But we know that the contamination coming from the vegetables. Yeah? Right, so the, the result shows that 52% um, yeah, is uh, from the raw chicken were positive, carry the resistant, colistin uh, resistant genes, yeah. And then the, um, it's a very, um, but of course, the more comprehensive, comprehensive and large case study should be focusing on the possible sources of this uh, gene resistant. <clears throat> Right. Um, another one is uh, is a bit uh, old, I think, 2012, uh, the prevalence of the multidrug resistant in uh, poultry, poultry farm in, in Malaysia. They have carried out uh, this uh, research that um, processing that 72% um, of saprococcus and of course seven, uh, about the same, 71% of the pastoral species. Yeah, uh, that's well resistant, multidrug resistant. Yeah? So in, in poultry farms, yeah, in, in, in Salango, in the Negri Sembilan, yeah, it's nearby, we have huge um, KFC chicken farm, um, Ayamas, the huge big um, fast food uh, farm, poultry farm, the, the, the Pizza Hut as well, yeah, they, they, they are taking, uh, getting the chicken from, from the, the farm, the, nearby the Salango and, and Negri Sembilan. But you can see here from the finding this, um, huge, um, more than 70% of the um, isolate bacteria is the multidrug resistant, carry the genes that multidrug resistant. All right, uh, a little bit about the uh, current scenario in Malaysia based on this um, national surveillance for this antimicrobial resistant uh, that we have in 2019. The 2020 report is not coming yet, maybe because of the pandemic, it's still not still not uh, uh, completed yet, 2020, maybe the report only we can get the, the another year, so maybe for the 2020 we can get the report in, in February next year. So this is the latest uh, report from the National Surveillance. Uh, we have the vancomycin resistant, 10% in intracoccus facium. 2% in Enterococcus faecalis and also increased resistance rate in Acinetobacter babunai. This is all the human pathogens, um, bacteria, and this is vancomycin resistance. How, how scary of this, yeah? the last result of this um, uh, antibiotics against uh, gram-negative. Yeah? And also we have the amibinum and ferropinum resistance, 7.7% uh, 7, 7 in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And but for against the uh, peparacillin and tazobactam is decreased resistance. Thank God for this uh, uh, report. Yeah? So this is the current scenario in Malaysia and we have some um, from 2014 to 2019, you can see here the ampicillin is never decreased 
but always increase resistance here. Yeah? Maybe yeah, 85% in 2015, a little bit down to 20 in the 2015 and it's increase to 90% in the 2090. This is percentage of resistance. Eh? Gentamycin and uh, vancomycin, yeah, and then linozazolin. Yeah? This is the uh, trend for the in against the internal focus phasium. Uh, for the uh, different antibiotics, again, the acinotobacter babunai, as, as uh, we can see here, is the uh, increase of the resistance uh, of antibodies among the um, among the acinotobacter babunai, yeah, especially in the in the um, majority of of this isolate uh, recover from the patient in the uh, medical intensive care, surgical, and ONG orthopedics uh, department. Yeah, this is all the samples coming from against uh, different uh, antibodies. Uh, from the 2014 to the 2019, especially you can see there is uh, for the um, uh, 2019, the green color one, yeah, for these uh, particular things. And for the Pseudomonas originosa, so increased resistance was noted for all antibiotic tested in uh, 2019 in comparison with the 2018. Yeah? You're comparing the the um, uh, green color and blue color, light blue color bar is all increasing. Yeah, it's uh, from the um, or the epinum and morapinum increase from decrease. Yeah, was uh, decrease, but uh, it decreased from the. Uh, Increase from the 5.2 to 7.7 percent. Yeah? Okay, this one uh, for the Salmonella typhi, that one is all the decrease, uh, a, a decrease antibiotic resistance, uh, especially for for this uh, five different uh, antibiotics. Yeah, I mean ampicillin from the 15 percent to three. About four percent, yeah, and, and other antibiotics, yeah, chlorophenicols from eight percent to two point seven percent, right? I um, search uh, in the in the um, uh, literature for the especially for the Indonesia um, research, yeah. Uh, they have reported by Amanda and all. Uh, 2020 in the uh, Journal of Microbiology, Immunology Infection, that said that 44% uh, of uh, streptococcus pneumonia, yes, has been isolated from patient with commodity acquired, and, and is, is a resistance uh, to the tetracycline. Uh, another uh, particular research by Sugiali and all in Journal of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy is 2017. Eh? They uh, run the carry out the research uh, based on the patient based surveillance of uh, AMR in E. coli eh, and uh, Klebsiella pneumonia that causing urine, urinary tract infection. Uh, this is um, show the resistance to the uh, commonly available empirical treatment option is very high. Eh? So they said that smart AMR surveillance strategies are needed to inform policymaker and to guide intervention uh, for, for this um, particular bacteria. Uh, despite of uh, this is a, a plus one at Taburi 2019, yeah? uh, they said this among the uh, career of the research among the infant until 18 months old. Uh, despite the low community consumption, consumption rate, the overuse antibodies in URTI eh, and non bloody diarrhea in uh, their setting represent a major opportunity, opportunity for antimicrobial stewardship, particularly in their early life. Eh. So this is uh, some alarm, alarm notes that should be uh, taken by, by, by appropriate people eh, to, to, to see eh, how, how, what's happening here. Pardon me, Prof. Nora. Yes. Are you tired of 15 minutes left, Prof? It's like? 10 minutes. Oh, another 10 minutes. All right. Okay. 10, yes. 15. 
15. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Prof. Yeah. So this is some some more uh, pre, uh, uh, what you call it some more uh, research been carried out in Indonesia 2018 for the ESBL and then the resistance uh, rates um, in the Samuel Typhi and Samuel Paratyphi very low as well. Same similar similar result in, in Malaysia. Yeah. Right, so I think we come to the uh, last part of my presentation uh, in, on the research on antimicrobial agent. You know, uh, by knowing antimicrobial resistance um, taking place, to, to know, to understand the behavior of the bacteria, which bacteria that are resistant to which antibiotics, and in uh, the balance of the cases uh, so so actually we can uh, channel we can narrow down the research in this to finding to find the uh, uh, antimicrobial agents in the sense that uh, to combat this uh, resistance how to do the research this is how should be the ideal situation actually i i'm, I'm talking about about my, my presentation but actually what i did is the other way around yeah, I, I, um, maybe it's, it's not in the ideal situation. What I did is I find the antimicrobial agent. I start my research in antimicrobial, uh, antimicrobial agent for the 10 years first. And after that, only I just realized that I should know how the antimicrobial resistance working. First, what the bacteria is resistant to, what antibiotic, what kind of, what kind of compounds, active compounds that I should... Um, I should uh, try, I should uh, see, I should uh, explore, I should find what kind of uh, compound, bioactive compound that can be used to, to kill the bacteria. You see, so, so uh, it's okay, it's never, never too late, yeah? never too late, it's always something that, uh, learning process, you know, even though we think that we, 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 okay, we are good in research, but sometimes we have to slow down and say, look, I have to see the other way around first, something like that. So, so this is all life, never too late to, to know everything, never too late to, to say that, oh, I'm not so correct to do the research, something like that. Yeah, so, so this is something that is just explore journey, yeah? exploring uh, new things. Yeah? So the antimicrobial agent that we done uh, in our labs is, um, looking at this um, compound, the bioactive compound from microbe itself. You use the microbe to kill another microbe. Yeah, that's what we call it the endophytic microbes that uh, isolating from plant. One part, yeah, they said the, the first part. And another part, we use the plant itself. The plant itself, the medicinal, traditional uh, use plant that being used by native people maybe but used by by our great grandmother great grandfather they use that to cure diarrhea they use that to cure uh tuberculosis something like that and we, we use that plant so the plants one plants we use that the plant itself and we isolating the bacteria the microbes from the plant in order to produce the bioactive purpose so two different uh, approach because if you're using the plant how much you can harvest? 100 kilos? Tonka Ali is, is lost now. Eh? 1,000 kilos is lost now. But if you are the bacteria that coming from Tonka Ali, for instance, we can always reproduce because they are bacteria. They are easy to grow in the lab. And so this is how we, we see the approach. Yeah? This is coming when we when I start uh, meeting one of the father of Indofight in, in uh, one of the conference, uh, Prof. Gary Strobel. So he gave the idea. So I am very young at that time, 2001, I think. Not so young, maybe, but it's just started my, 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 my journey, my research. So meeting him, so incredibly talk about these things. So I went to his lab in, in the Montana State University and started looking for the endophyte. Right, so, so we, we use the plant, the, we start with the native medicinal, medicinal plants first and isolating the, the bacteria from the normally from the stem from the batang yeah the batang the stem of the bacteria or the roots yeah we surface sterilization we culture uh, the the bacteria and we targeting uh, mainly for the actinobacteria 
such as streptomyces, yeah, that the 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 seventy percent of the antibiotic nowadays is coming from the streptomyces. So we identify the the streptomyces, and then we extracting the metabolites from them, yeah, getting the pure compound, uh, screening the antimicrobial antimicrobial activity. And there is one one part. Another part is the, the, the plant itself. The plant itself, we're doing the primary screening. If they're good activity, so we're starting to do the extraction using the uh, organic solvent as well as to do the secondary uh, screening. All right. So this is uh, our first paper that uh, produced uh, together with uh, Gary Strober that we started in 2000. Uh, and this is paper in 2007 yeah the, the, is the start experiment is 2005 isolating the different um streptomyces endophyte endophyte meaning to from the plants yeah the plants and getting the the isolates in in our lab now we have more than uh, nearly maybe 200 300 isolate of streptomyces to start to to do the screening and 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 and, and of course have the different different um activity so we have one of them is is um, characterization of this particular isolate. SUK is stand for the strain University Kebangsaan that have this uh, antimicrobial activity. One of my master student, and we have these particular plants that being used traditionally in, in Malaysia for the um, after birth uh, treatment, yeah, quercus infectaria that can be used as against oral pathogens. Uh, another thing is this, um, we use as well uh, different technique, yeah? uh, nanoparticle size of the katosan, for instance, that um, have a drug um, delivery system that can be used as an antibacterial effect. Yeah? So we have a collaboration with the pharmacy, pharmacy's, uh, pharmacy department to, to do this uh, project. And uh, um, yes, we have this um, activity against the Asinotobacter babunai. We have a screen about 60 isolates from the endophytic streptomyces. And um, the 14 isolates have activity against the Asinotobacter babunai when we're starting to do the extraction uh, and then uh, um, find this um, active compound. Eh? What's the active compound that been um, been the, uh, in in the in this uh, endophytic streptomyces able to kill the asinotobacter babunai? Uh, we have this uh, research as well together with the uh, faculty of medicine that uh, producing um, try to look for the using of the um, imipenem that's. It's one of the drugs is not really good or uh, it's good uh, at the moment but when we uh, combine with another drug eh, trigacycline for instance it can be a uh, good potential to, to use against carbapenem resistant as you know this is one of these uh, research that been carried out in one of my PhD student 2015 the paper produce uh, for the anti-malaria uh, activity against this um, uh, septomyces producing by the septomyces uh, as you can then we produce the um, chemical compound the bioactive compound which is uh, namely uh, dancidin w from this particular isolate that we can use to kill the pseudomonas uh, sorry um, uh, plasmodium uh, plasmodium pasiflerum for the ma malaria parasite also for this MRSA from other isolate, SUK25, that produce the cyclotreptophenyl profilyl and chlorophenicol as well eh, to, to be used to kill the uh, MRSA. Calcidin W together with the other previous paper for the uh, anti-malaria activity. And uh, we have another, uh, this is from the MRSA, mm, SUK25. Uh, another compound. So, so, so you can see there is a lot of um, different chemical compound, bioactive compound that can be produced by streptomyces in the fighting. I, I mean, we started from the scratch, isolating 
from the plant and then uh, producing them and then one of them many of them are novel isolate that produce a novel compound eh? like let's uh, one of them is the um uh the kebangsaan yang sis eh? streptomyces kebangsaan yang sis that we name after uh, we name after ukm that produce the phenazine yeah, from the uh, new antibiotic. This is in, in BM, so <laughs> everybody is, is open. Uh, this can be read, yeah, 2019. All right, and the last one, uh, we produce uh, this paper for using honey, yeah? uh, raw Malaysian stingless bee honey uh, that been uh, used to kill the gram, negative and gram positive bacteria. I think um, this, uh, all right. This is the last slide and thank you very much from all of us in Normal Antibiotic Research Group in UKM. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Nora. What a wonderful and enlightening information that you give to us this morning that a collaborative network is necessary to to against this uh, antimicrobial resistance issue and also to see your your research so many research that so many publications that you've been made to find another alternative uh antimicrobial therapy which maybe later i want to ask you something about is there's any industrial in malaysia uh try to seek this uh new compound to to, pro to produce a uh, new antimicrobial uh, 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 drug, something like that. But we will discuss it later uh, together with other uh, questions which already pop up in the uh, chat room. Uh, thank you very much for Prof. Nora. And I, please stay in this e-seminar. We will proceed to second uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Anis Karniawati, medical doctor, PhD, consultant in clinical microbiologist from microbiology department, Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Anis is my teacher until now, and also my role model here in, in our department, of, of course. And a uh, short, uh, Curriculum Fite, as I can read here, I also receives a standing CV, which uh, we, we, we here try to pursue this kind of CV. Dr. Anis completed medical doctor from Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia in 1990, followed by clinical microbiology specialist in 2001. Uh, furthermore, Dr. Anis completed doctoral degree from University of Hohenheim, German, in 2006. Uh, during her professional career, Dr. Anis also received many recognitions in international and national level. And nowadays, aside of her activity as lecturer and second vice dean of Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia, Dr. Anis also a secretary of National Committee of Antimicrobial Resistance Controlling Program, Ministry of Health, Republic Indonesia, member of board of Indonesian Society of Infection Control, or PERDALIN, and member of Antibiotic Resistance Controlling Program team in Cipta Mamun Kusumo Hospital, Jakarta. Dr. Anis also involved in many collaborative research projects uh, the latest one may be together with Indohun, Indonesia One Health University Network, and ongoing, and ongoing research with Erasmus University Rotterdam, focusing in, antiba in antibacterial resistance. Uh, without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Anis to deliver the presentation entitled An Eco Health approach to develop strategies to control antimicrobial resistance in human, animal, and environmental health in Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Anis, uh, 60 minutes time is yours now. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fitri, uh, for your uh, very nice uh, introduction about myself. And thank you also for uh, Professor Nora, 
uh, you have already uh, presented a very comprehensive uh, subjects in uh, antimicrobial resistance and also for your share uh, about your uh, uh, research. Uh, uh, I hope uh, it will, uh, it, uh, your research uh, products also uh, produce also uh, alternative for our uh, antibiotics. As we know that, uh, and already explained by Professor Nora, that the problem in uh, antimicrobial resistance is it's actually a very big problem. It is from upstream to the downstream and uh, from the production to the user. Yeah, so all uh, aspect, all component uh, of these actually uh, has to be involved in controlling the antimicrobial resistant problem in the world. So we know that uh, AMR is the global problem, not only here in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Asia, but also uh, in the whole world. Even uh, from the literature said that uh, in the poll, it is also isolated uh, the uh, AMR uh, bacteria. Yeah, so uh, we have to face this and together uh, we need to collaborate uh, to overcome the problem. Uh, in this session, I want to share our uh, research. Actually, this is a, a public health uh, research uh, about uh, the eco health approach in controlling antimicrobial resistance in human, animal, and environmental health in Indonesia. Uh, these are the names of the researchers. So we are from a very different uh, uh, expertise from the uh, socioeconomic community engagement, veterinary, uh, from public health, and me myself from the clinical microbiologies, uh, from the epidemiologies, and Winda, Ibu Winda is uh, actually the principal investigator at that time. And uh, we uh, collaborate with, uh, this is the like uh, NGO, maybe yeah? the CIFAS or Center for Indonesian Veterinary Analytical Studies. Yeah, so uh, it is actually already a few years ago. So the research was done in 2014 until 16. But for me, myself, uh, it is uh, a very uh, good memory because we uh, come together, work uh, in the grassroots, and uh, we know uh, exactly uh, what actually the problem we face in the community. So as uh, Professor Nora has already explained about the, uh, the complexity of the AMR problem, this is a multidimensional multifactorial problem which involves socio-economical levels of the community from farmers, public and private industries, uh, consumer to decision uh, makers at local, regional and national levels. Yeah, so uh, from industry, uh, I have to uh, tell you also that uh, the pharmacy, the big pharmacy until now, uh, they don't have any interest anymore to produce a new uh, antibiotic. So actually in the last 20 years, there is no uh, new antibiotics. We have only uh, the like uh, modified antibiotic. Com uh, the, the combination uh, was new, but actually it is not uh, the new uh, antibiotic molecules. Uh, why? Because uh, the production need uh, much cost uh, and long time from the first uh, phase until the fourth uh, clinical phase. And then uh, the use of the antibiotic, as we know, in patients uh, only for one week, two weeks. So for them, 
it is uh, much benefit to produce uh, drugs like anti-diabetic and the hypertensive because uh, the patient will use this for uh, a long life. Yeah, so that's why uh, it is our problem now how we use uh, the available uh, antibiotic uh, prudently, rationally. Disciplinary approach and wide range of stakeholders must be involved to solve this problem. And the integration of veterinary science and human public health, epidemiology, and socioeconomics is very important, uh, are very important elements to develop and recommend solutions and strategies. So eco-health is actually the same, has the same meaning with the uh, one health. Why we use this uh, eco-health? So the, the, mean, uh, the definition of eco-health is uh, that uh, the, this is the field uh, examines the complex relationship among human animals and environment and how this relationship affect the health of each of these domains. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, exactly the same meaning as uh, one health, but uh, because this research is funded by the IDRC, which is uh, the institution in Canada. And uh, so the government of Canada prefer to use it uh, instead of One Health. So that's why we use uh, words EcoHealth uh, in this research. So the goal of the research is to explore, develop, and assess the effectiveness of a strategy to the proper use of antimicrobial in humans and animals to control antimicrobial resistance in Indonesia. And uh, we have uh, five, actually uh, eight objectives, but I uh, compiled it as a five objective for this presentation. Uh, the first is to understand the regulation and accessibility of antibiotics in animal health and human medical practice, and then to assess the knowledge, attitude, practice of medical doctors and antibiotics usage in health facilities, and then to increase local participation in antibiotic, antibiotic resistant control efforts. And the fourth is to facilitate better understanding on antibiotic use and accessibility in layer layer chicken yeah, or ayam petelur and swine farms and develop potential intervention strategies for antimicrobial resistant prevention. And the last one is a survey on antibiotic susceptibility of E. coli in human, in human animal and environment. So for the objectives four, why is it in the layer chicken and swine uh, farms? Because this both uh, livestock use much antibiotic, yeah, uh, rather than, uh, for example, uh, for the cows and also uh, chicken, uh, what you call, I don't know what is in English, uh, ayam potong, yeah, uh, so ayam petelur and ayam potong. And uh, so this, uh, both uh, livestock uh, use uh, much antibiotic. Uh, Actually, in, uh, for example, in uh, coals, they use also antibiotic, but not uh, so less than uh, hormone. Yeah? So that's why uh, we focus on these uh, two farms. Uh, we, do this, uh, we did this study in uh, Central Java, uh, in the three district area, Klaten, Sukoharjo, and Karanganyar. So uh, it is, of course, not easy for us because uh, the, the office of the headquarters of SIFAS is in Bogor and uh, the researchers come from different area. So uh, we are from Jakarta, from Bali, uh, from Semarang, also from Jogja. Yeah, and then uh, during this time, so uh, maybe, Every two weeks, I have to fly to this place to do the uh, uh, the research, and uh, the period of the field study is feb uh, between February until November two thousand fourteen. 
yeah, uh, by plane, uh, it takes uh, around one hour from Jakarta to Solo first uh, or Surakarta. And then uh, we go to this uh, area. So it is not uh, far away from Solo because it is uh, in the uh, uh, near. So this is a neighborhood of uh, Solo. For the research preparation, uh, we have we had meetings and then pre-surface and also a technical coordination in livestock services of the Central Java province and also the public health uh, office uh, in the uh, district level. And then also we do the field staff training and uh, questionnaires trial, not only to the health workers, but also to the community and uh, the farmers. Yeah, because we have uh, it's a uh, different uh, questionnaires uh, for them. Yeah, so we uh, proceed to the first objective to understand the regulation and accessibility of antibiotics in animal health and human medical practice. This is actually the death study. Uh, we do the uh, data, col we collected the data, uh, all the relevant information, document, uh, all the act, uh, undang undang, yeah, and also the decree, uh, peraturan uh, menteri, and also some guidelines. So we gather all of those data and do the uh, systematic review and also analyze the gap. Uh, rise in Indonesia. So uh, this is the uh, result about the supply chain and distribution of antibiotic and human health sectors. Yeah, when uh, the, the antibiotic uh, was produced from the local uh, industry or imported from the uh, international uh, pharmacies, then uh, of course, uh, there is a, a, a procedure for the license uh, or registration uh, to be uh, sold in Indonesia. And then uh, usually uh, it is uh, distributed by the medical representative and it should be only to the pharmacies or hospital but in the reality, we know that uh, they also sell the antibiotic to the market uh, and also to uh, what we call the toko obat. Yeah, and uh, we have here Professor uh, Nora, uh, what we call pasar market uh, in Pramuka Street. Uh, there are uh, many apotheques and some of them has the uh, license, but some of uh, them also don't have uh, any license. Yeah, but uh, I, I hope everything now is becoming better and better, of course. And also drugstore, yeah. And uh, it will be uh, uh, bought by the public or the patient, yeah. And uh, this is the system mapping of the antibiotic for human health. Yeah, so as I told you, from the producer or the importer, and they come to the pharmaceutical wholesalers, or we call it as Pedagang Besar Farmasi, PBF, yeah, in Indonesian language. And all, uh, of course, uh, it is monitored by the uh, BIPOM, Dirjen Binfar, this is the Directorate General of Pharmaceutical and Medical uh, Devices. Uh, this is under Ministry of Health and BIPOM or the uh, National Agency of Drug and Food Control, so Indonesian FDA. Uh, the Indonesian FDA, the BIPOM, will give the registration. Uh, of course, uh, after they do all the uh, evaluation of the drugs, and then uh, after that, uh, they got the uh, registration number and they can uh, sell it in the market. And uh, uh, 
hospital will get this and also health centers and pharmacies. And uh, this is the illegal uh, way of course, drug store will also uh, get this from the uh, or the pharmaceutical wholesalers. And uh, all uh, the permission of uh, pharmacies in the hospital, health center and uh, outside hospital, pharmacies outside hospital, got the permission from the province health office. And uh, every year, no, mm, I'm not sure about that, but the monitoring system, uh, uh, they have to monitor them uh, using, of course, the uh, form, the legal form. Uh, they will check uh, whether the uh, drugs that uh, used to uh, be prescribed, uh, it is really uh, sell by prescribing or not. Yeah, so, but of course there are many, uh, many drugs that have to be prescribed, not only antibiotic. So uh, only antibiotic is only one of them. So sometimes, or most of the time actually, they don't really uh, monitor uh, how the pharmacies how uh, the antibiotics and then uh, also doctors yeah then do the prescription and to the consumers yeah uh, and uh, this is the all the association that uh, they are users but actually they produce the guidelines uh, how to use this antibiotic so in the uh, our in our program now in AMR control in the national level, we have, uh, we always uh, collaborate with this association because they produce the guideline and we hope that uh, also they will uh, monitor uh, their uh, members. Yeah? And how about in the, in the, uh, in the animal uh, health sector? The problem in animal health sector is uh, so more what we call uh, free yeah, because they don't have pharmacies. There is no apothec for animal drugs. Yeah. And uh, usually from the drug distributor importer, uh, it is directly uh, the technical representative of each uh, pharmacy will bring this cell, this uh, antibiotic directly to the uh, livestock services, to the veterinary, or to the pet shop, animal drug store, and drug mark. We know that all uh, the antibiotic use for animals should be different with the one uh, we use in the uh, human uh, health sector. Yeah, but in the reality, it is not like that. So some of the drugs are actually also the drug for uh, human. So uh, this is uh, what happened in the uh, animal health sector and also for the uh, AGP or uh, antibiotic, which is used as the growth promoter and mix in the food or uh, of the feed of the uh, animals. Yeah? And uh, actually there is already an act, undang undang, in 2009, which uh, uh, to uh, apa melarang itu apa ya? So the, yeah, so it is not allowed to use ATP uh, in, in the feed, but uh, it is not done. It is not implemented until there is a decree from the Agri uh, Ministry of Agriculture in 2018, January. 2018. Yeah, so it needs nine years from the act to the regulation. And from that time, uh, since 2018, uh, they uh, try to implement uh, this. Yeah, so the antibiotic cannot be used as the promoter. And uh, Professor Nora has already uh, also explained about the colistin. And uh, 2018, colistin is still used, 
but then in 2019 we discussed uh, many times to produce to make the regulation about colistin and uh, i hope uh, i have not yet checked is there already a regulation about this but uh, all the uh, farmer uh, already informed that they cannot use colistin anymore for their uh, poultry or livestock yeah, so this is the system mapping in the uh, animal uh, for the uh, antibiotic use. So uh, from the distributor, it is directly uh, to the drug uh, depot and then uh, hospital and also drug store. So no pharmacies here. Yeah, so it is, uh, I don't know how they monitor this, but yes, there is a monitoring system but uh, I don't think uh, it is like in the uh, human sector, yeah. Uh, so this will not uh, influence the the permission uh, to open to to uh, give the services in the hospital. Yeah. So uh, there is a uh, one thing that I have not uh, explained is about the black market. Yeah, this is something that uh, actually uh, we don't know really, because uh, sometimes from the uh, importer, uh, of course there is uh, some antibiotic uh, which is not uh, sold every year or maybe already expired. Where are they? Yeah, so we assume because uh, in one on two uh, uh, farms, we found uh, this kind of antibiotic, so the expired uh, antibiotic. So, and uh, some people said that uh, they got it with the cheap uh, price from, with the low price from somewhere else, and they don't want to mention it. Yeah. So, <sighs> Indonesia is very uh, big countries and it is very difficult to control everything like this. Yeah. And about the gap analysis. So I show you only uh, some of them, but it is the important one. Uh, the current situation, uh, there is an improper prescription of antibiotics. It is actually in 2014. We try to make it better and better uh, by doing the uh, education or the workshop for all hospital and doctors. But uh, you know that again, Indonesia is very big. Until now, it is actually not 100% doctors know about this or uh, aware about the AMR problem. Yeah, so uh, we have produced the uh, like stewardship guideline, antibiotic stewardship guideline, and also all the uh, regulation that uh, the theme of uh, AMR control in the hospital is one of the component in uh, to get the accredi hospital accreditation. Yeah, but uh, so they, they have already, each hospital has their team uh, for uh, what we call it uh, antimicrobial resistant uh, control team. Yeah, but uh, whether they do it uh, properly, we have to uh, monitor every year. Yeah, so the other thing is also improper consumption of antibiotics by patients. Yeah, so that's why uh, we uh, said to the doctors that they have to give or to educate uh, the patient every time uh, they prescribe uh, antibiotics. And uh, also uh, we have to educate the community, the, the patients. They have also to ask the doctors, every time they got the antibiotic, then they have to ask the doctor. So 
uh, what uh, what is your diagnosis uh, and why I have to take antibiotic for this diagnosis? Yeah, so uh, this is very important question to make uh, the doctors also uh, to remind the doctor the doctors to educate them. And then uh, the third one is that antibiotics can be purchased uh, without prescription. And for this, uh, we collaborate, of course, with the uh, Indonesian Associate and Indonesian Pharmacy Association. And uh, they do also the same thing, educate all the pharmacies, the assistant pharmacies, uh, that they uh, have to comply to the uh, regulation. And then how about in animal sector, uh, the current situation and still until now in the most part of Indonesia is excessive use of antibiotics on farm. And they need this uh, to, uh, they said that it is uh, to prevent the, the infection. And that's why uh, they, uh, the, the, our colleagues from the Ministry of Agriculture uh, now uh, conducted uh, many workshop uh, for the biosafety of the uh, poultry and also uh, livestock. Yeah, because the hygiene is the most important one to prevent uh, the infection uh, in livestock. And then uh, the second one is uh, the very important things is also that the animals sold uh, or slaughtered without considering antibiotic withdrawal time. Yeah, so uh, there is a time, there is a certain time that they have to comply between the uh, putting the antibiotic to the animal and then when the time to slaughter. Yeah, and uh, they have to comply to this uh, time, to this uh, period of time. Yeah, so with education also. Yeah, the second one is uh, to assess the uh, knowledge, attitude, and practice of medical doctors and antibiotic usage in health facilities. So this, uh, in this uh, part, we uh, do we did it in the uh, three district. Yeah, in the Sukoharjo, Klaten, and Karanganyar in Central Java Province. And uh, we involved at that time 40 puskesmas or primary health uh, care center uh, in the sub districts levels and also 14 hospitals. This is district hospitals, so type uh, classes. We call it as uh, categorize it as a class C and D. And then uh, we do structure uh, interview using the structure uh, questionnaires. And then uh, this is the uh, respondents. So uh, uh, most of them uh, are so more female than male. And then uh, in this age, and uh, so all of them are a general practitioner uh, with the experience of work uh, more than nine years, uh, mostly. and. Uh, Duties duration in this uh, health facility is uh, more than five years, and this is their knowledge. Uh, where in this is in sorry, it is in uh, primary health care, yeah, and uh, the knowledge about uh, antibiotic use is actually not so good, yeah, but, uh, because uh, most are moderate. So not high, even though they are doctors actually. And then uh, also in the hospital is much better than in primary health care. And then uh, in the practices, uh, usually they prescribe antibiotics. So most of the time, only once a day, regardless of what kind of antibiotic is that. It is because the the availability or the uh, the stock of the antibiotic it is very depends on the stocks of the antibiotic and that particular uh, puskas mass yeah uh, and then uh, about uh, so this is why in upper respiratory syndrome and non-specific diarrhea in the next slide 
I will uh, give you also the data from Ministry of Health because these two uh, diseases or these two uh, diagnoses uh, as a parameter uh, for the rational use of medicine uh, that uh, both uh, has uh, so not use antibiotic have so antibiotic uh, should not uh, be prescribed for these two kind of diagnostic uh, but in the reality uh, they give it in the 65 percent and also in the non-specific uh, diarrhea sometimes they give it but most of the time uh, not really yeah so this is data from the ministry of health from 2010 to 2006 so uh, in their parameter uh, for diarrhea non-specific because it is uh, caused by viruses, uh, the target is uh, 8%. But uh, in this time, in the uh, this period of time, it is always more than uh, 40%, even though they have already educated the, the health workers there, the doctors as well. And, and for acute, Respiratory infection, non-pneumonia, it is also mostly caused by viruses and the target is 20%, but it is always 40% during this year. Yeah, so uh, it is actually very important. Uh, unfortunately, after 2016, I don't know why, uh, Ministry of Health uh, did not uh, do this uh, kind of monitoring anymore. So I don't have the data after uh, 16. This is the antibiotic. Uh, these are the antibiotic uh, they use in the uh, primary healthcare. Uh, mostly are, of course, the oral antibiotic and also the uh, hospital. Some of them are uh, parenteral antibiotic. And this is the mostly uh, they use amoxicillin, cefadroxil, ciprofloxacin, metronidazole, cefixim, levo, and erythromycin. So it is uh, still okay. I mean, uh, they don't use the reserve one. They don't use uh, the cephalosporin too much. Yeah, but they do uh, use the uh, levo, the fluoroquinolone. Yeah, so this is uh, the assessment uh, for the uh, facility of uh, this uh, both Puskesmas and also our primary healthcare and uh, the hospital. Uh, first is about the use of antimicrobial, the stocking system, that they got these uh, drugs and also antibiotic from the uh, public health offices. Yeah, so the distribution is from them, from the uh, health services at district level uh, monthly. So they got from uh, directly from the external pharmacy, uh, but uh, with the approval from the uh, public health uh, office. And then, uh, so as I told you that the usage or the prescription is very much depend on the stock provided. So that that's why sometimes they give it only once a day for three days or maybe sometimes two days. So without uh, knowing how this antibiotic actually work. Yeah. And then they have to report uh, everything, the use of the antibiotic to the health services. And about the education, they don't do it uh, properly. So, uh, when we ask about the uh, how the doctors educate when they prescribe antibiotic and they say they don't do it because they think that the patient can read themselves from the labels yeah so uh, both in the primary healthcare and also in the hospital yeah so we uh, try to explain about this because uh, this is very important to explain it to the uh, patients. So always the reason is too many patients, they don't have time to do it and so on. And then uh, about the uh, antimicrobial resistance, they don't have the uh, specific program for this. Uh, they don't know uh, or also they don't do the uh, 
surveillance program. So there is no microbiology laboratory uh, in their uh, area. If they need, then they have to send it to uh, nearest uh, cities, uh, which is uh, Jogja and Solo. And of course, it takes time. Yeah, so from the recommendation, uh, at the time we uh, said to, or explain it also to the uh, public health offices uh, to do the regular capacity building for all the health officers, health workers about the AMU, antimicrobial use and the AMR. And then also uh, education about the prudent use of antibiotic as the key messages and uh, improvement uh, of the regulation and monitoring system. Yeah, and then also the increasing the surveillance program for antibiotic uh, resistance. The third one is to increase local participation in antibiotic resistant control efforts. This is the most uh, interesting for me. Yeah, uh, because uh, we really involve in this uh, part with uh, the grassroots, with the community. So uh, at first we do the baseline assessment, problem identification and reaching an agreement with the community because it is very hard to explain about resistant, resistant uh, in bacteria, something abstract for them. The uh, frequent asked question is, what happened if I take antibiotic? So actually there is nothing happened <laughs> at this time. So that's why we, we have to explain them uh, slowly and then clearly that this is uh, for your next generation. Uh, so for your children and also for the environment. And then after that, we do the training for the capacity building, running the program and mentoring and then monitoring evaluation and program adjustment. So uh, we uh, collaborate with uh, 93 health volunteers in the community and, and they were trained to become Bijak antibiotic cadres. So uh, most of them are actually health uh, uh, cadres, kader kader kesehatan uh, for tuberculosis. Yeah, and uh, so they are very keen to know uh, more and more about the antimicrobial resistance. So I, I like them very much, really. And these uh, cadres come from four pilot uh, villages and two observer villages in uh, these three districts. And uh, these cadres are a group of local people and uh, the health volunteers. And also they uh, usually take uh, two or two people, two or three people from its sub villages, yeah, uh, the RW, yeah, from uh, we call it as Rukun Warga, uh, Professor Nora. Uh, this is uh, the smallest one, the smallest unit in the community uh, we call as RT or Rukun Tetangga. Yeah, so usually it is in one street, uh, consists of 50 and 60 families, and then uh, some. Uh, Rukun Tetangga is uh, unite in the Rukun Warga, and this is what we call a sub village. And uh, this is uh, these cadres are selected based on their willingness to increase community health level and regardless gender, age, and education background. So, the first uh, part we do the baseline assessment, we give uh, understanding about what is a MR problem. And then the second one, uh, we do the second part, we do the uh, all the training uh, using uh, some method, role play, simulation, group, dis uh, group discussion, and class presentation. And uh, at that time, uh, the, the, the most interesting one, we ask them to bring their drugs, which is stored store in their house. And then uh, they have to tell us what is it, for what is it, and how they got it. And they don't know actually which one is the antibiotic. 
So this is another thing that is very difficult. How they know that it is antibiotic? Because when every time when we uh, when they uh, go to the pharmacies and they said that I got flu, my uh, I have sore throat, uh, I need drugs, and the apothecary, the pharmacy will give it, and they don't know which is it is uh, actually analgetic or antibiotic. Yeah, and there is no explanation more about the drugs from the pharmacies, and then. Uh, do uh, we did the evaluation? So how they stand the problem, and what can they do uh, for their surrounding for this? They are very, they were very, very active, and uh, their job is to educate the community. And every time they do this they write it down in the log book, what we call it log book, what they do and uh, with whom they speak uh, about antibiotic, even though they just speak with their husband, for example, uh, they have it down. And then after the evil, uh, this uh, sign, and then put it in their house, uh, that this is a cadre for bijak antibiotic and the name of the cater. Yeah, so this is the key messages. So uh, because, uh, okay, uh, I told you about the farmer. So uh, the other reason that we choose that place is uh, that more than 60% of the community are farmers. Uh, that's why uh, actually uh, some of the caters is, uh, are also farmer. They have their own farm uh, in the uh, in their uh, house. So behind the house, on uh, in the surrounding of the house. Yeah. Uh, so that's why uh, we do uh, both the key messages, uh, what we call bijak, with two different uh, uh, meanings. Yeah. So be uh, believe. It's a by with the prescription. And then uh, I, it is in Indonesia, ikuti, follow the rule of antibiotic usage. Uh, J is jeli dan berani, aware and be brave to us doctors. Uh, awasi, caring for antibiotic usage in the family and consult with the doctor, K. Uh, for the farmers, it is a B, give for treatment, so not for prevention. And then ikuti is follow the rule of the antibiotic usage. And then J, jaga masa henti obat, aware for withdrawal time. And then uh, A is awasi, caring for antibiotics usage in farm. And then consultation, uh, consult with veterinarian. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we give all the tools for this. Uh, I, I will show you later. So this, uh, uh, Dr. Anif, yeah. pardon doc, 20 minutes left. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, of course uh, they are not paid for this. The cadre are not paid, but because they are really uh, volunteers that are uh, very smart also for their level. And uh, they proud of themselves that they know from, uh, uh, they have, more knowledge than uh, the other. So that is the, the, the benefit of them. So I hope uh, they still do it until now. Yeah, so the recommendation for this part is replicating this model on the village level. Yeah, so, and then uh, of course they need the technical support uh, so like a mentoring, evaluation and program adjustment. Yeah, so the fourth objective is to facilitate better understanding Standing on antibiotic use and accessibility in layer and pig farms and develop potential intervention strategies for antibiotic, uh, antimicrobial resistance prevention. So uh, we did it in the 40 layer chicken farms and then 40 swine farms uh, in the same uh, period of time. And then um, the respondent is farm owner. Uh, uh, so 
some of them, the wife is the caterer and the husband is the farm owner. And then a manager or worker responsible for animal health management and farm. And we use also, also structure uh, questionnaire. And this is the uh, characteristic of the respondent. So they are uh, mostly are small scale farms. Uh, which is uh, they have only less than 5,000 birds. And also in the uh, swine farm, also the small scale farm mostly, and uh, small scale uh, means less than 100 pigs. And uh, education, so mostly are lower than high school. So again, this is a challenge for us to give the understanding, good understanding for AMR problem. Yeah, most of them uh, do not, didn't have any uh, veterinarian or veterinary technician. So they give all the feed, the drugs by themselves. Yeah, uh, how they got this antibiotic? Uh, so usually this is to give or not uh, the antibiotic is decided by the farms themselves. And then uh, they got it uh, from the poultry shops uh, and also from the technical services of drug companies. And this is all the uh, drugs, the, or the antibiotics they have. And uh, mostly they, uh, the purpose of the antibiotic uh, is for treatment and the other one is for uh, prevention. And this is the accessibility of the uh, drugs. And uh, if we try to count, to calculate uh, how much they spend their money for the antibiotic, and they said uh, so most in the maximum is only 1.3% of the total production cost. So it is actually not really much. This is, uh, of course, the drugs that uh, in the, what we call, as a drugs. So we don't know how about the mix uh, drugs in the feed uh, because it cannot be identified. And uh, if we ask them uh, what uh, is the ingredients or the content of the food, the, the, the feed, uh, they don't know. They don't really know. Yeah, and this is uh, the antibiotic used in pig farms. Yeah, and uh, also the uh, proposes is for treatment. Yeah, so uh, the conclusion of this part is that uh, the many uh, antibiotic use in uh, layer farms are broad spectrum and combination. As, as you see here, this is a combination and penicillin and streptomycin, for example, and also in the uh, layer, penicillin and streptoamoxicillin and colistin. Yeah, and then uh, there is no indication of uh, antimicrobial we are resistant from, uh, from the clinical science, yeah? And then uh, it is, uh, the access is very open. So there is no uh, monitoring system also in that uh, how they got uh, the antibiotic. So the last one is a survey on antibiotic susceptibility of E. coli in human, animal, and environment. Yeah, so, uh, we try to uh, collect the specimen uh, from some places, so not all part of the districts. Uh, and then uh, we try to uh, uh, choose the, the villages uh, as a representative of this uh, part of study. And uh, we do uh, the collection in the uh, pig and layer farms and also the farmers and their family and the uh, waste water as the environment of the farms. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, the, the first district. We choose three villages and then each of village uh, only three farms. Uh, so samples, uh, pigs is from rectal swab, layer chicken from cloacal swab, and human uh, from stools, and then the environment is from wastewater. 
and this is the number of the samples. So uh, it is a little bit uh, different with the human. If uh, human, then uh, every individual of the uh, farm farmers will be collected, and uh, it is uh, uh, counted as one sample. But in the uh, farms. Uh, there is pool. So one pulse means uh, taken from uh, 10 pigs. Yeah, so the swap is from uh, uh, 10 swaps from 10 pigs and then pull it together in one uh, as a one sample. And then uh, take the uh, isolate the E. coli as a parameter yeah, for the uh, resistance. And uh, we do this uh, work in the two laboratories. One is uh, Diagnosis Investigation Center or uh, BBFET in Watas. This is near uh, Jogja. And the other one for human, we uh, do the laboratory examination in Muari Hospital in Solo. Yeah. And of course, we collaborate uh, to, uh, to do this in the same way and uh, we culture the swab and also the stool to McConkey agar and then identification for E. coli uh, in the human sample uh, phytec 2 is used from biomeru and then animal and environment samples uh, is then used manually and then uh, both uh, the antibiotic susceptibilities is uh, both use uh, the, this diffusion, and this is the quality control. Uh, so for the internal quality control for antibiotic susceptibility test, uh, both laboratory has to do uh, 20 uh, replicate of uh, tests for each antibiotic. So this is the antibiotic uh, we use for this. And this is uh, the number of E. coli we got from uh, all the samples. And the total is uh, 725. And this is the uh, result. So uh, this is only uh, in the pig farms. Yeah, E. coli from pigs from the rectal swab. This is from the wastewater. This is from the farm workers and the uh, family of the farmers, yeah. And uh, the blue one is uh, the susceptible, isolate, and the red one is resistant, uh, sorry, intermediate, and the green one is the resistant. And this is the antibiotic. Uh, we uh, see here that the, the, what do you call it? The, the pattern is almost the same among this group of uh, isolates. Yeah, for example, this is uh, ampicillin. And the question is actually why the cephalotin uh, is, uh, there is an intermediate because they don't use this. And also the chloramphenicol, there is an indication that uh, some of the uh, isolate is already resistant as well, uh, even though they don't use chloramphenicol as the drugs in the port in the uh, livestock. Yeah, so, uh, and this is ceftriaxone is still good, gentamicin also, and ciprofloxacin. Yeah, so, but we, we see here that this is uh, showing us the uh, similar uh, pattern. And also in the chicken farms, it, it is almost uh, the same with the uh, pig farm. And uh, of course, this is only phenotypic pattern. Uh, it will be much better if we can do the genotyping, uh, but unfortunately, there is no more uh, funding for this. And that's why we stop until this uh, phenotypic uh, uh, characteristic only. So uh, there is a conclusion, as conclusion, there is a similarities and uh, cephalotin is the first generation of cephalosporin. We use it only, usually not for therapy much. Uh, uh, this is used uh, more for the prophylaxis. And then uh, maybe there is possibility that chloramphenicol is actually also being used in that uh, livestock. 
And uh, the recommendation is that the survey of this antibiotic susceptibility should be done periodically to evaluate the AMR control program. And we have to strengthen the hygiene practice, including use of antibiotic in human and livestock. So this is uh, only, uh, I just want to show you the products of this uh, study, Buku Panduan or guidelines for the uh, uh, farmers. And also this is for the pig farm, and this is for a uh, layer chicken, and this is for cater. And uh, also uh, this is kind of uh, what do you call flip chart or like a desk calendar. Yeah, so how uh, they have, so the cater have to give the, uh, the or educate uh, their friends, their family. So this is the one that they have to show to the, uh, to the friend. And this is uh, how, what they have to explain. Also this one, we have to try, uh, we have to explain them what kind of drugs is actually uh, found in the drugstore. You have to watch this about the green uh, cycle, red cycle and blue cycle. What does it mean? This is restricted and this is free. This is uh, restricted, but have to be careful to use it and so on. And also uh, we give them the, the to identify uh, that this is antibiotic or not, yeah, using, uh, so maybe with that cycle, if there is the red cycle, if there is a, a statement there that this should be prescribed by the doctor and should be uh, taken until uh, all of the drugs, so this is uh, mostly are uh, the characteristic of antibiotic. Yeah, this one uh, we, they have to show them which one is the antibiotic and uh, which are not antibiotic. So this is the team. And uh, I'm sure that you know him, uh, Professor Nora. This, uh, this is the Professor Wiku, the chairman of uh, Indohun. And we collaborate also with him very closely. And acknowledgement uh, for IDRC, for uh, APEA and then also all the uh, stakeholders in this uh, study. Thank you very much. I'm sorry if I take the time more. Thank you, Dr. Fitri. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Anis. Actually, the time is still six minutes left for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's okay, because it's already Adan. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Adan now. Maybe in, in uh, Prof. Nora place in, in Malaysia, it's, I don't know, one hour ahead from us. I'm sorry, I a bit forgot about how is the time different uh, between here and Malaysia. In Malaysia uh, now, it's uh, 12.43. Oh, 1243. Yeah, so you're one head, uh, one hour's head from us, the prof. So uh, we will this uh, we will continue to this uh, discussion session for this uh, e-seminar, which uh, already several questions pop up on the chat room, and I already get the. Uh, uh, what is it? The brief uh, 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 copy of the uh, questions, and there are three questions. Firstly, uh, it, uh, it will uh, go directly to Prof. Nora, and uh, first question is from Mewah Dewi from Eokru. Uh, the question is: What are the factors that may cause decrease of percentage of IMR? What are the factors that may cause decrease of percentage of IMR? Maybe from your data uh, previously there, in several years, their trend to the AMR level is decreased. So, yes, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. yes, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Yes, actually, um, it's a lot of um, things that we can do to decrease the AMR, the usage, uh, to 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 to, to in decrease the antimicrobial resistance is to reduce the use of antibiotics. Actually, that's a main factor. But in order to do that, uh, we need to have the um, people that understand 
uh, to, to prescribe, for instance, to prescribe the the correct antibiotic, yeah, uh, not to misuse, not to overuse of the uh, uh, antibiotics. Let's say some some patient just simply ask uh, the antibiotic for the flu, yeah, for the infection, uh, flu infection, and of course, um, in 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 the Europe, for instance, they have the ban of using the. Uh, uh, certain antibodies in the uh, agriculture, so it is one of the way to to reduce the AMR, and then uh, of course we need to have the global public uh, awareness campaign, like uh, Dr. Anis and the team doing a community yeah, to educate people. It's very very good. I'm I I I, I interested very much to do that actually, maybe for for our next um, model for for our next uh, coming student we can we can do that uh, reach to the community level um, to do the the awareness program, and um, of course uh, another. Uh, aspect also is to improve the healthcare system. So improve the healthcare system, improve the sanitation, it's, it's, so it's an infection diseases it will be decreased. And of course, the need of the antibiotics will be decreased and will use uh, lesser and lesser antibiotics and can reduce the uh, antimicrobial resistance. Um, um, and another thing that I, I might be forgot to to um, uh, touch in my in my presentation just now is to uh, promote a new or rapid diagnostic uh, diagnostic kits, for instance. So this can avoid to miss diagnosis. Some uh, patient just go to see doc doctors and maybe doctor is uh, prescribe a lot of uh, broad broad uh, broad. Um, uh, broad, uh, what you call it? Broad uh, and uh, broad antibiotics. Uh, it's covered gram positive and gram negative at the broad same spectrum. time. Ah, sorry, broad spectrum. I just lost the word. Sorry, <laughs> like spectrum of the antibodies, and and yet the the patient is only infected by the gram negative. Just for instance, so if we have the rapid uh, diagnostic uh, tools that can be used, yeah, um, uh, the, we have a, a new project with the engineering people. They develop a new uh, biosensor, which is can detect this um, COVID nineteen, for instance, in a very short time. Instead of RT PCR nowadays, uh, it took so maybe six hours to get that. But with the biosensor, it's very rapid. We can get the result in twenty minutes, for instance. So it's very important to get the um, rapid um, rapid diagnostic tools. And the last one, I think we can uh, promote the use of the vaccine other than antibiotic with, with the Clostridium difficile. For for instance, we already have vaccine. That develop, but of course, when the when you say the vaccine development, it is not a lot of money. Yeah, still, still a uh, ongoing process. So that, that kind of things. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, Prof. Nora. And um, the second question is from uh, Muhammad Helmi Aziz. Uh, he's a student in our clinical microbiology specialist. Uh, does plasmid mediated resistance has a limit? How many, or and how big is the plasmid-mediated gene IMR can be encoded in a single bacteria? Oh. Is there, yeah, sorry, Prof, is there a trade in and trade off mechanism of for plasmid-mediated gene IMR, since bacteria has restrictive endonuclease? Well, it's, it's very basic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The biomedical Prof. Yeah, it's a. Um... It's an advance for me actually because I never done the plasmid uh, research per, per se. Uh, but as you know, the plasmid is the um, is uh, they have a self self uh, replicating yeah the self uh, the self replicating system. They all all the mechanism is can can be can be found in 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 the plasmid. So of course the 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 the, A, the AMR genes is carried on the plasmid yeah. It can be transferred from from one bacteria. Uh, even in the same species uh, or different species through the conjugation. Yeah? So um, normally uh, multiple, not only one genes, multiple multi-drug resistant genes is carried by, by this uh, plasmid. So it's moved from different plasmid 
or from to the chromosome this can be can be moved uh, so from the recombination system so from from the we, we know that this um, resistant plasmid uh, 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 the, the the plasmid that carry the resistant is uh, conjugative which is about 30 kilo base the size is not so big it's, it's smaller but even though it can be uh, used, uh, the, the, the damage by the restriction and the nucleus, for instance, but they already have uh, self-replication elements. Yeah, so the the um, the function of the resistance is still there. It's, it's, it's not it's not cannot be harmed by by the 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 the, the what you call it the, the 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 enzyme or whatsoever. And this uh, to answer to to trade in the retreat of you, re, you really need to do the the research um, deep research on that i just cannot comment on that actually <laughs> because i never done the plasmid research yet. but it's really interesting um to know that uh, this uh, to further up this research in, in in order to understand yeah and, and some 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 of the research they say the curing in the plasmid the kill the plasmid itself mm -hmm. before before you, you 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 have some some compound some chemical compound that can be taken orally to cure to, to kill the plasmid itself so it's oh. can stop the the antibiotic resistance there are some but it's still not approved by fda yet yeah mm -hmm. okay thank you very much Prof. Uh -huh. and then uh, i think this is the last question for you uh from asbar uh some assumptions say that uh, some species especially in mosquitoes as factor that resistance to some fogging active substance may become sensitive after some years termination or replacing that active substance. Uh, this is for example, and the question is, is it is in antibiotics resistance, this kind of phenomena can uh, appear? And can we just uh, do this uh, strategy to reduce the IMR? by replacing the drugs or maybe terminate the drugs for some for certain uh, time something like that bro mm -hmm. yes thank you it's uh like, like for the fogging things yeah because um you know we know that the the, the resistant genes is, is in in the dna itself yeah and then the um the changes the mutation the mutation can be easily Taken out. I'm not sure how how the research current research to see the mutation taking place uh, in in the bacteria in the plasmid itself uh, uh, when exposed to those those chemical for instance. But I'm sure it can be it, it can be happen actually easily because the mutation uh, especially for for the uh, uh, the DNA uh, mutation just even for one single uh, nucleotide. Yeah, it's can the uh, code for the different amino acid already maybe yeah so it can be it can be happen uh, easily so the strategy that's that's what people are looking like to in the curing um, the plasmid and, and so forth this is one of the strategy i think that can uh, um this is at the very molecular level you know is uh, the application to the like a uh, host Host, uh, human host uh, respond is can have to be considered as well. It might be have some some toxic effect. So that kind of things that need to be uh, done, like um, first uh, phase clinical trial, second phase clinical trial, and and so forth. So the the main important is prevention. I think if we want to 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 stop the to to reduce the spread of AM, the prevention is better than cure in that sense that uh, uh, like uh, the of what to use the um, misuse or over overuse antibiotic the global uh, awareness campaign and so forth just the prevention can be can be uh, play important role here yeah thank you thank you prof uh, maybe dr anis has some comments about this uh, usage maybe in the patient uh, uh, scenario or something yeah so uh, it is uh, we we know about the uh, bacteria communication maybe so this is also one uh, hypothesis that in our colon uh, there are so many uh, bacteria that uh, they can 
uh, they can what do you call uh, so the 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 movement of the plasmid can be uh, happen also there and also the uh, selective pressure uh, it is also very important uh, that uh, because this antibiotic is actually not uh, directly only kill the pathogen but also the other uh, bacteria which are susceptible to uh, this particular antibiotic. So, and we know that uh, actually the number of bacteria cell in the human is uh, more than the number of the human cells itself. <laughs> If I'm not wrong, uh, Professor Nora, uh, I have read about that, that uh, the bacteria cell is uh, so many in our uh, body, so human beings. So uh, we have to be uh, aware of that, that if we use antibiotic, it will also kill all the our friends. Our friends. <laughs> the bacteria is now our friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in a certain in a certain way. Uh, I will continue for the uh, next questions is uh, directed to Dr. Anis. It's from uh, Rizka Ariani. Uh, yes. She said that in Indonesia we use azithromycin as one of therapy for COVID-19. I think this is quite new. As we knew, as we know, COVID nineteen is virus and not use antibiotics as main therapy. How is azithromycin work for COVID nineteen? Can it contribute to con can it contribute for antimicrobial resistance of azithromycin? Yeah. So uh, it is not only Indonesia use okay. azithromycin for COVID. Yeah. So all this is uh, the guideline is uh, also uh, the international guideline said also this. So we use uh, azithromycin and also the uh, chloroquine, yeah, the anti-malaria. Yeah. So uh, the answer is that uh, so azithromycin in this matter has also the antivirus effect. So this is uh, the the new uh, knowledge that I, I also got <laughs> in this uh, pandemic time. Yes, but that's why this is the reason why. Uh, even though we actually uh, the knowledge about uh, COVID is still uh, on progress, it's still developing. Uh, so every time uh, can be changed. Yeah, but uh, right now. Uh, we believe that azithromycin and also chloroquine uh, have the uh, good effect in uh, killing uh, or the eradicating the the virus. Yeah, uh, it will in contribute. Yes, of course, because uh, azithromycin is a very good drug. Uh, you we use it for uh, children also. Yeah, it's uh, safe and then uh, also that we can give it only once a day or maybe uh, only one time uh, uh, therapy uh, and it uh, works very good. But uh, so uh, this drugs uh, is also easy to be, uh, so the bacteria is easy to, re to be resistant to this drug. Yeah, so uh, we have to be careful, of course. And uh, we also have to understand that uh, in the COVID patient, there are some stages, as uh, no, some uh, clinical uh, performance. So there is no uh, symptom uh, and mild and symptom and also uh, severe. The mild one, uh, uh, it, doesn't need any uh, antibiotic, also the azithromycin. And usually we uh, use it for the moderate and the severe one. So this is my question, uh, my answer. Okay, thank you very much, Doc. Continue to the second question from uh, Muhammad Helmi. I think he uh, got insight from your uh, previous uh, study, Doc. Since that one health approach involving human, animal, and their shared environment, how often should we screen to perform surveillance to detect emergence of IMR in environment? 
what kind of samples that should we took or used to evaluate the emergence of IMR in environment? Do we have data of IMR in from from environment? And the second one is why E. coli is used as a bacteria of choice in this uh, study? Why don't use another bacteria? Yeah. So in environment, there is uh, no uh, certain uh, time to do the to do the surveillance. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, there is no obligation also, uh, but uh, some, uh, what you call research center uh, do this. And uh, what I know is the uh, Finlandia uh, do this um, many things about the environment, AMR in uh, environment. Uh, they observed that uh, the AMR bacteria uh, come from hospitals uh, to the uh, to the what do you call Sungai uh, River. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they don't uh, do the good uh, treatment for this wastewater, then the AMR bacteria, the uh, resistant bacteria, can go to so far away. Uh, many kilometers from the hospital. Yeah, so they, they use this, the, the study uh, for AMR in, in the environment is not uh, done periodically. Yeah, uh, there is no regulation for that. Uh, also the WHO right now uh, uh, only uh, ask the countries to do the surveillance for AMR uh, in uh, human health, animal health and also in fishery, only this uh, three, that they have to do it, uh, uh, they have to report to the WHO yearly, but not from the environment. And how uh, we do it usually, uh, uh, most of the study uh, do the survey or the study uh, of AMR in the environment is from uh, the river and uh, from the wastewater, uh, that's all I think. Uh, and also maybe from uh, food, yeah, from uh, what we have done also, survey on uh, ice cube, ice cube, ice cube. Not only cube, not only ah, cube because ah, there thanks. is also uh, uh, I to co to make uh, the but the drink bottles drink uh, cold, so you know the a big box brick <laughs> of uh, ice, yeah. So because uh, it come from, for example, in Jakarta, they uh, produce these ice cubes from uh, the river Kalimalang, you know. <laughs> but then uh, this <laughs> will be filtered. Yeah, uh, filter, uh, there is two ways, two kind of uh, filter type filtering. One, uh, it is for this ice to make, to cool the uh, drink. Yeah, so it is not for drink, <laughs> but to cool, to cool the, to make it cool. Yeah, but be careful that in the street, they use also for, Thing, right? Yeah. Be careful. So don't <laughs> don't drink any uh, cold uh, thing from so tech bottle in the plastic. You know, <laughs> some uh, uh, so many children uh, take this, and the other one uh, uh, filtered uh, for the ice cube. Uh, this is good, uh, sterile, but uh, the other uh, uh, ice it is very. Uh, uh, so it contains stale anti uh, stale contained bacteria and also the resistant one. So they do also this uh, the uh, periodically and uh, usually done by the uh, BPOM, uh, the, uh, the deputy for food. Yeah, they have both food and drugs, and this is the uh, the institution uh, names the. Uh, uh, apa intelijen pangan gitulah ya the intelligence for food yeah so the the method is the same like uh, what we uh, do in uh, uh, daily 
uh, identifying the uh, E. coli using biochemical tests, and then uh, also the uh, antibiotic susceptibility test based on CLSI standard. So I hope uh, I answer the question. So E. coli, uh, so the one thing is that we use this uh, as the parameter like uh, ESPL enterobacteriaceae. So uh, we usually compare this uh, 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 E. coli, uh, ESPL producing E. coli and also other enterobacteriaceae producing, uh, sorry, ESBL producing enterobacteriaceae. Uh, this is the first one as the uh, parameter. Uh, and then uh, the second one, E. coli is the easiest uh, bacteria to identify. And uh, usually it is very uh, common to find it in as a flora, a normal flora in the uh, stool. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe that is the, the reason, but uh, it is uh, yes that we we use uh, most of the country usually use E. coli as the uh, parameter. So maybe because also this is the uh, indicator for uh, like uh, water. Yeah, uh, my uh, if you if we do the microbiology examination for water, uh, we use also we count also coliform and E. coli. Yeah, so this is the parameter of uh, the fecal contamination. I, I don't know, is there any other reason for this, uh, Professor Nora, do you know? Yes, I think that this is the, the E. coli oil oil is the model of the yeah. um, indicator yeah, for the yeah. many bacteria. Because all, of course we have the like the so full sequence, the characteristic has been known yeah. by, by details for, for the E. coli. Yeah. Yeah. As a model. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Papnora. And I think this is the last question for uh, this seminar uh, pointed to Dr. Anis uh, from Agung Wiyarno, uh, our student in master program in biomedical sciences. Uh, when we detect superbugs in the pig or chicken farms, what are containment measures or strategies can be done to prevent the spread of the bacteria? Should we also trace the transmission to the people who consume products from the farm? Yeah. So we don't have guide any guideline for this right now. Uh, also in the hospital, for example, uh, we have the infection uh, prevention and control team in the hospital. And if we find someone with uh, infection of uh, AMR uh, bacteria, then we do the uh, uh, what we call the practice is the uh, using the precaution, contact precaution. Usually, if there is a patient with MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or maybe with Carbapenem resistant or ESBL, then we have to do the uh, contact precaution. So there is uh, some step for that. And we have it in the uh, human health, but we don't have it in the animal uh, health. So there is no uh, procedure how to contain, but the important thing is only the hygiene. Yeah, to practice all the uh, uh, hygiene uh, procedure. So that's what I can uh, explain. So there is actually no uh, certain or specific uh, procedure for that. Thank you. Okay. Does this in contact precaution here is including tracing to doctor? Um, uh, yeah, you ideally, yes, we have to do tracing like in the hospital, what is the or which is the source. But then the question, who will pay for this tracing? <laughs> yeah, because the tracing in the bacteria is not only the phenotypic, right? 
we have to do genotypically. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Doc. How about in Prof. Nora in Malaysia? Is there any uh, strategies that can be shared here? What to? The strategies, yeah, for example, like the uh, Dr. Anis answered before that the contact precautions here are only available right now only in human uh, environment, mm -hmm. only in the patient's uh, uh, environment. Uh, is there any, uh, I don't know, legal aspect maybe in, in Malaysia already available? That no, we should, not, yet. Not, not yet also. Uh, not yet also, yeah. <laughs> we still, because, you know, <clears throat> the limitation of the funding, you know, to do this, all these things need the funding and uh, very limited funding at the moment with this uh, currently pandemic. <laughs> the, the, the fund is, is very um, I have to, uh, affected uh, badly, actually, for, for doing this kind of research. But we try, we try, we always... Uh, try to, to get this uh, once they, go, they get the funding it can be done inshallah mm -hmm. <laughs> we keep optimist uh, still optimistic you know, prof and doc <laughs> okay i think that's all the questions uh arise from this uh from today's seminar uh we already answered already answered and already discussed well uh, from our two speakers and for me as a moderator right here uh, I would like to wrap up a little bit so uh, the collaborative uh, collaboration collaborative uh, working in uh, in many uh, uh, any many aspect many uh, many professions is needed to to uh, overcome this IMR antimicrobial resistance uh, issue, which is uh, of course globally it become a global issue right here, and we cannot stand up alone. Uh, we have to hand by hand to hands working together to to work these things out. And uh, since, if I'm not wrong, Dr. Anis said there's no uh, available uh, new antibacterial was found for the last 20 years. I think the, of course, the uh, the the uh, what, the research like Prof Nora did, how to uh, found such a new compound, a novel compound that that hopefully can be used in the uh, uh, to overcome this antimicrobial resistance is a very, very good of, and hopefully it's very promising for us. And I don't know, is there something that I like here? Uh, how about the industrial? Is, is there, uh, sorry, Prof, uh, in Indonesia, maybe it's very hard for us to get uh, support from industry. How about in Malaysia on your own uh, uh, project itself? Is it is it uh, difficult to get uh, support from industry to what to develop new compound of, of this antimicrobial so we can yes hand by hand together to overcome yes. this IMR. We, we just uh, we just started with the industry uh, collaboration <laughs> now but for for those uh, the biosensor things you know so it's starting uh, to maybe the industry start to look for for our research nowadays so it's, it's starting uh, the giving uh, some fun giving some expertise and giving their facilities yeah inshallah in the future in the very very near future mm -hmm. yeah thank you prof yeah hopefully this also can be a part here yeah. through this uh, seminar maybe there's industrial i guess there's uh Few, uh, several people come from industry, from uh, vendors uh, of uh, uh, laboratories, or, uh, equipment, something like that. And if I'm not wrong, there's some people that I knew that also join. Uh, uh, at the end of the uh, seminar now uh, today, uh, I apologize if there is any uh, words or my behavior is mistakenly taken. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And uh, hopefully this uh, seminar can bring a new insight also and enlighten to all of us that this IMR is a, uh, is a hot issue, hot topic aside the COVID right now. It's, I'm, I'm happy to, to moderate this, uh, this seminar because this is new, a little bit bored with COVID issue. Uh, personally but yeah this is so enlightening and i'm so happy to be joined here thank you very much to prof nora to dr anis 
I give the time now to uh, Master of Ceremony, Dr. Isti. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Dr. Fitri. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi For uh, guiding the discussion from both speakers. And finally, we come to the end of this event. Alhamdulillah. And thank you so much to all the speakers and also the moderator uh, for sharing their knowledge. And I also send the regards and sorry from Prof, uh, Professor Ina because she has to leave earlier. Uh, because she has another meeting yeah, this afternoon. And then to all the participants, we also thank you uh, for your coming and your nice um, hearing here. Um, yeah. See you again on the next e Forum Biomedica. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.